What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken and today we are looking at the FCX18 from FMS and we are going to be talking all about this and this. So the transmitter and the receiver combo um, and all the different features this guy has. This thing is actually super feature packed and I think a lot of people don't realize that you can do true four steer with this. Rear, rear wheel only or all four uh, mirrored or crab walk all off this remote uh, proportionally, which is pretty sick. So we're going to dive into it. Stick around to find out. Now, before we get too far into this, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. We try to bring videos that help people out, show them how to use their RCs, show them how to build things, uh, make them feel comfortable getting in there and taking stuff apart and cutting and soldering and all that good stuff. So your subscriptions, your likes, your shares help our videos rise to the top and educate everybody in the RC community and hopefully get new people comfortable with building awesome stuff. First thing we're going to look at are the indicator lights on this transmitter. So we've got an indicator light right here. This is the R LED, I guess for red LED. It's the power indicator. The G LED is on this side. It is the green status indicator. And then there's an RX battery, which is the ESC battery power indicator. And that's the middle one right here. When the power is high, the RX battery will be a solid green. So let's turn this guy on solid green that means we have full power when the power is medium it'll turn to an orange when the power is low it'll turn to a red when the power is super low it'll be a slow flashing red and then if the receiver is not connected obviously uh it's just going to be at whatever state it was or off so that looks like it's just going to be off actually so that's what this light here is. This G LED is going to be used mostly to tell you you're into different modes for um, different settings and whatnot. All right. I want to go ahead and show binding real quick now. To bind, it's super simple. Your truck is off. Your transmitter is off. You hold the bind button down. Turn on your transmitter. It's going to be blinking. Turn on your truck. And everything binds up. Okay. Simple as that, guys. Now, if they don't bind, the receiver will end up just slow blinking, and that'll tell you that it's not bound up, okay? Kind of like that. But we are bound, so it does not blink. Now, from the factory, this guy is calibrated, which is calibrated for your dead zone in the middle, uh, your full throttle and your full reverse. It's setting your endpoints for your throttle uh, stick here, basically. Um, it should be totally good from the factory, but if for some reason something starts to act funny with your throttle um, and it's not your trim or your dual rate, then this is how you're going to want to have to fix that. And it's called the stick calibration. Now, whenever we do this, we always put our truck on its roof or just somewhere so that if the truck decides to just go because um, you calibrate it wrong, you're not going to drive off your desk or whatever. So with your transmitter off, you're going to hold your steering all the way to the right or clockwise, and then you're going to do full brake or reverse. Okay, all the way and then turn it on. That's going to enter you into the calibration mode. So we should have some fast blinking here as well as our yellow light up RX battery. So we can also calibrate our steering here, put our endpoints with our steering, and it's going to be basically a full clockwise, full counterclockwise. Okay, that tells us that we have set our steering. Next, for our throttle calibration, we're going to push the, uh, the throttle all the way forward and then all the way backward. And then that green LED or G LED will turn off. Both the steering wheel and the throttle are now calibrated. So you're good to go there. Once it's done, we can go ahead and hit the bind button and that will save it. So again, pretty simple. We just hold all the way to the right and full reverse turn on our transmitter and then full left, full right, or full right, full left, and full reverse, full brake, bind. Super simple. That'll calibrate and get all your endpoints set correctly.
So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. We're going to talk about the different channels and what we can do. So obviously channel one is your steering. Channel two is your throttle. Channel three is your shift. That's your shift servo, which is a left, right, and center. So a three position. And then channel four is set up for our lights. This receiver will do our lights through channel four. But then also, if you have a servo plugged in and you hold channel four down for two to three seconds, one, two, it'll shift. And it's a full left or full right, which historically is how we did rear steer on one of these transmitter receiver combos. But this one I think is updated and it's got something very cool and I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, but basically for the way we had done it in the past, if you've seen any of my other videos where we did it, we would take and attach the shift servo to channel four. So now we shift through channel four. So we have first and second, and then we would do rear steer left, right, and center through here. So you'd go left, center, right. And that would give you a full lock left, full lock right, or center for your rear steer, which was good because you could at least do rear steer. And there are ways to trim this uh, as well as trim this. You can trim your channel three and your channel four. And we'll get there as well. But now they've introduced the ability to have actual rear steer modes. Okay, I will get there as well. We're gonna first walk through our basic trim settings. Obviously, we have steering trim here, which will center your steering. You also have dual rate, which is kind of like your endpoints, but you basically can full lock and you'll see you can turn down that dual rate so that you're not going to be hitting your endpoints. Okay, and that prevents servos from getting damaged or if it's overturning and you're rubbing, things of that nature. See, we've turned it down and now we have very little steer. So if you find that happening, turn your dual rate all the way up or just up some more you want to turn it up until it's comfortable and then the same thing is with your throttle we have dual rate and you can turn that dual rate down oh we're in neutral we were in neutral there okay so you can turn your dual rate up and down so if you hand it over to a kiddo you can put it in real slow mode okay or you can turn up the dual rate all the way okay and then same with trim. Trim is going to be if you're moving by yourself for some reason, it's because you're trimmed and that's forward and reverse. So you want your trim set right in the middle so you're not moving at all. And then throttle is what moves you. Okay. Now you're able to go in and set the trims and endpoints for channel three and four as well. So we have mode switching. Now mode switching allows us to switch to change our trims. And we basically are going to hit bind twice quickly within one second. And then we're able to adjust our trims on our other servos. Now, hold on, let me um, flip this over and I can show you better. So if we have a servo on our channel four, now that we're in that mode, after double clicking bind, we're able to change our trim using our trim knob here, okay? And you can adjust your trim on your shift as well. So if you're having issues shifting or it's staying in neutral or it's not going in neutral, you can adjust your dual rate and your trim on your channel three. And then same thing on channel four, you use your throttle trims and dual rates. Okay. And then double click to get out of that mode there. So all your trims are back on your normal channel one and two. All right. All this is in the, in the manual guys. So if you read your manual, it'll show you all this cool stuff. Another feature that this has is beginner mode. Beginner mode is designed for new people. So if you do have a kid that messes with your throttle and uh, trims and dual rates and all that stuff, this will lock them into a slower speed, making it easier. It basically gives you 50% throttle and um, the channel range is reduced a little bit so you don't have quite as much steering and things like that. So by default, obviously it's set to normal mode, but if you wanna switch it to beginner mode, all you have to do is press and hold the channel four button while turning on the remote and turning the steel steering wheel all the way counterclockwise. So we're gonna go counterclockwise, channel four, okay? And then power on. Now the GLED will be working, okay? And You can see we now have a slower, slower max throttle and the steering is slowed down a little bit. Okay, and we'll put it back to normal. Again, channel four, counterclockwise, turn it on, and now we're back to normal. All right, so you can do that. And if your truck is acting weird and going slow and steering seems less responsive, maybe you're in beginner mode. 
The next thing I want to touch on before we get to showing you the rear steer setup are these dip switches. Oh, and your reverses. So reverses are simple. They just reverse the channel. And then same with throttle. When I do uh, switch the throttle, I'll go forward and it'll go reverse and reverse will go forward. Okay. Or if your motor wires get switched, that's one way to switch that. Now I do not think there's a way to switch the servo uh, on channel three and four. We can try. Let's go ahead and go into that, that mode where you go double click. Now we're doing our trims. If we switch, let's see. So, and then if we switch this, does it switch? How about that? Nope. It looks like you cannot change your channel four or three. You cannot reverse them. So those are stuck the way they are. If you want to reverse your channel three or your channel four, you might be SOL. You might be out of luck here, guys. All right, let's do our dip switches next. Now, a lot of people love this transmitter because of the dip switches, because it makes it very easy to set things like your running mode and your drag brake. I'll put up a little chart right over here. You can see it's basically showing you how to set up the different dip switches. Um, forward brake reverse or forward reverse brake basically gives it so that when you give it throttle, you've got forward. When you go back, you've got a brake, not a reverse, and then you let go and go reverse again. That's meant for monster trucks or trail rigs. Some people like to run their trail rigs that way, but hardcore crawling, you're going to want forward reverse, forward reverse, and so that's going to be the first dip switch up. The next set of dip switches or dip switch is going to be just your lipo versus nickel metal and these all run on lipo so you're going to have that to the down position that basically gives you a low voltage cutoff the next two switches are your drag brake okay you're basically going to have to set your drag brake all the way to 100 percent or all the way to zero or 50 percent or 75 percent so you can look at the chart there for what the different percentages are based on how you want your truck's drag brake to act, but it's pretty simple right there. So zero, 50, 75, and 100. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go through all the lights, but again, you basically turn the lights on and off with channel four. Now what everybody's been waiting for is the four wheel steer. How do we do it? Basically, you can plug your servo into channel four just get an extra set of axles, uh, front axle with a servo. You can hook it right up. You'll have to probably get an extension to run your cable because the servo wires are pretty short, but run your cable up into channel four. And then on your remote, you're basically gonna do the following. So to enter four wheel steer mode, all you have to do is hold your bind button down and then press your channel four button and you will be into four wheel steer mode. So what that means now that we're in four wheel steer mode is that you have your normal steering, and instead of channel four just switching your servo left and right, now channel four, when you hold it for two seconds, will change your servo to four wheel steer mode. So you have mirror, well, this could be crab or mirror, I'm not sure, it depends on how we hook it up, right? So we'll just say that's crab, and then mirror, if you hold it again. Now they mirror, if we hold it again. Now it's gonna be rear only, your front will stay forward. And if we hold it again, just rear. If we hold it again, front. So again, if we do front, hold it, crab, mirror, rear. rear oh actually it looks like it reverses the rear so you have you have uh four modes you have crab mirror rear only and then rear only mirrored and then i guess front so five modes so very interesting guys that's a very cool feature though built in that allows you to again do truly proportional rear steer pretty sweet and if you turn your transmitter off turn it back on that mode is still there. So you don't have to put it into rear steer mode every time. Okay. You will have to choose which rear steer mode you want, but you won't have to put it into the rear steer uh, channel four mode. It'll always be set to that. And if you ever want to go back to just having channel four, do 
the servo by itself, you'll do the same thing. You'll basically just hold the channel four and hit your bind button. And then your channel four is going to switch to just a single servo. You're not gonna have your rear steer mode anymore. It'll be standalone. Pretty sweet. I hope that was pretty easy to follow. If not, it's all in the manual guys and you can check it out at your leisure. Um, but sometimes it's easier for people just to visualize it and some people don't think to look in the manual funny enough. So I wanted to show you. And if you've got any questions or you have any other features you found with this remote, put them down in the comments below. This new transmitter and receiver, um, I guess this is V5 now. Don't know, but it's uh, it's definitely a good setup. You can see the receiver here. That's, that's which receiver it is. Um, your channel one your channel three, your channel four, and then all your lights along the top and along the side here. The only thing that would make this even better is if they had a channel two pass through, where if we wanted to pass the, um, the motor output, bypass it, and power this truck through an external uh, ESC and run a brushless, we could. So if FlySky or FMS is out there, if you guys were able to make this and give us a channel two, where we can actually install a brushless system without having to rip your electronics out. These will be the best ready to run electronics out there, hands down. So that'd be nice. Maybe everybody email them. Everybody email FMS and say, we love this exactly as it is in the FCX 18. Just on the next one, add a channel two. I know it's not easy. It's a lot of work, I'm sure. Um, but that would be the ultimate ready to run two in one combo setup because people love these small remotes. We've got all the light features all the channel one, two, three, and four features. Um, we just need an actual channel two so we can do brushless. Or if you want to run a sound module, you'd try to plug it into your channel two um, so that you can get your sound module to work, but we don't have a channel two, so we have no way to get a sound module to work at all. One other thing I wanted to point out, if you wanted to run a winch, you could do the uh, basic mode, not the rear steer mode, and put your winch on your channel three and then move your shift sort of down to channel four like I had originally shown for rear steer. That way you have a center, a forward and reverse for the winch servo uh, because you have to have a zero, right? You have to have a non-moving uh, setting where channel four doesn't do that. And then you can put your shift servo onto your channel four and uh, be able to run a winch and your shift servo and no problems. Now, if you wanted to run all of that plus rear steer, I don't think you're gonna be able to do that here. You would need another channel. But this thing for being a ready to run transmitter and receiver, it is killer. All right, guys, this video has been pretty long. I tried to keep it condensed and short. Hopefully that helped you out. Why don't you put down in the comments below, FCX 18 electronics rule. I know it's a mouthful, but it tells me you watched the whole video. Again, I hope this helps somebody. If you know anybody that's having issues with their FCX 18, send them this video. Um, yeah, check out our full review. We'll put it over here. And once again, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. I appreciate every single one of you watching. The channel is growing exponentially and we absolutely love it. So your support helps us keep growing the channel. And if you really want to support, become a channel member. You get early access to videos, the highest tier of channel membership. You get stickers. Uh, you can contact me one-on-one -on -one via different social media outlets. I'll be priority to answer your questions. Same with comments, priority comments. Um, yeah, just check it out. Like I said, supporting the channel with the likes, subscribes, and shares and all that is awesome. But if you want to go that extra mile, sign up to be a channel member. Um, we also do contests, and channel members usually get extra entries into those contests. Anyway, guys, get out there and build something awesome. Build a car, build a course, build a community, and then smash it, crash it, and bash it. But don't break the expensive parts.